Hi guys. Um, I'm going to do a Midori video, but it won't be a setup because I'm going to be tweaking the setup, and I'll show you that when I've finished um, setting it up again. But basically, and I'm not going to say this is going to be a quick video because every time I say that, it's over 15 minutes. Um, I got this leather on Tuesday, and it's beautiful leather. I think it's it's not very similar in texture but it's very similar in colour to the purple Molden Filofax. I don't think you can see it properly in the um, the camera because looking through my camera screen it shows it more blue than it should be and it's showing my bed sheet more pink than it should be so it's definitely not the right colour um, being transferred onto the camera but oh well. Um, and this is basically a video on how I'm going to make some modifications because this leather is very floppy. So the front, like obviously when I got the leather it was a rectangle, rectangular piece of leather. If I show you, um, I, I ordered it um, 23 centimeters by 30 centimeters, which is uh, 12 inches by um, da, 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 trying to do maths about nine inches so I ordered it slightly bigger than I wanted it because I thought if there was a side with an edge that wasn't quite straight I'd like to be able to cut it to the um, you know to cut the edges myself but the edges were really good so um, I basically got my um, one of my faux dories, actually a ray dory that was the same size that I wanted it in it. The one that Ray made me is slightly wider than a normal midori because here's a midori because I don't like where the um the inserts stick out um on the edges when oops, sorry when you've got a slightly chunky midori. So as you can see it's about a centimetre wider but it is the same height. So, um, I cut it myself, and the cutting part was easy, and then I punched the holes, and the punching hole part was easy, and I've got a special elastic configuration, which I'll show you later, but the putting the elastic part in is always the most difficult part for me. Anyway, um, that's by the by. Basically, I could decide whether I wanted this side to be the front and this side to be the back, or whether I wanted this side to be the front and this side to be the back and the the leather on this side is smoother and um, less kind of wrinkled and a bit tougher a bit stiffer whereas the leather on this side although you can't really see the wrinkles you can kind of see that it has these natural bumpy bits like I'm guessing it's either during the leather pro like manufacturing process when it's been stripped of its colour then um, dyed or rolled through the rollers or something it's just adopted this kind of slightly wobbliness so I wanted this to be the back instead of the front now if I show you this you will see that in comparison to a Midori so this one has a pocket on the front, so I won't show you the front part, but the back part is quite stiff. Um, it has obviously suppled up over time, but if I show you this top corner, it is quite stiff leather. I'll try to fold it back, and that's about as far back as it will go. This one, this is the front which is slightly stiffer, it rolls right back. And it does fold completely over, I can roll it right up and this way but the back is worse it is very supple leather you can feel it just by touching this bottom left hand corner um, obviously if this was touch of vision you could stick your hand into your computer screen and touch it but unfortunately you'll just have to take my word for it that this is extremely supple especially in this bottom corner um, as you can see it's kind of already bent around the bottom of the inserts and it is extremely extremely supple so I can literally roll this up it is 
rolled up like I can double it maybe even triple roll it like that um, which it isn't so much a problem with writing because I have these two um, um, plastic pocket inserts which means that when I'm writing it and the cover of the notebook so when I'm writing it's quite a stiff surface so that's not the problem the problem is when I'm carrying my um, faux dory when I have the closure on I like when I'm walking home from work I have um, my handbag and my bag with all of my other bits in and I've sometimes got my phone in my hand and stuff so I just shove this under my arm I hold it between my left arm and my side so sometimes when I'm um, rushing when I don't notice this corner folds up and it gets stuck like that and I don't notice and so if it's like that for a few minutes it kind of gets bent a bit and you can fold it back but I do think that there's going to be a crease you can sort of see down here there will start to be a crease and I don't want the leather to be damaged so I want to do something to stiffen the leather and I've googled it and I've asked on the Midori group and unless I want to risk shrinking the leather which obviously I don't there is no way to stiffen the leather so what I thought about doing is buying the um, pocket inserts that Midori sell and bear with me I'm just going to go get them with my other Midori this is my other Midori so this is the first Midori I got and this is the second Midori I got um, this one I got it second hand and the, um, the previous owner had already stuck um, I'll take that out. I'd already stuck these on. This is the, um, the little plastic um, pocket set from Midori for the Traveller's Notebook. They also make um, plastic and paper ones that aren't designed for the Traveller's Notebook that you can just stick in normal notebooks. I guess you could stick them in the Traveller's Notebook as well but it isn't in the Traveller's Notebook range. So they come with two of these ones that are designed to go in the corner you can stick them onto the insert or onto the leather and they have very very good adhesive so you get um, a corner that sits in the bottom right hand corner one and one that sits in the bottom left hand corner one and then you also get this wide pocket that is made from slightly different um, type of plastic that's more clear whereas this one has more of a kind of mesh pattern which you may be able to see kind of strobing on the camera there so I was thinking about buying these because this really does stiffen the leather I can't bend this leather at all whereas obviously on this one I can bend it like this on this one I can't bend it at all but I don't want to have to wait for that and I'm thinking of making my own out of card and um, I know that um, this type of fabric glue I've got, which I will show you later, um, sticks leather to leather, so I imagine it would stick card to leather very well. And I'm thinking of using this card pack. It is a um, scrapbooking card um, made by, I think the company is called First Edition, Trimcraft. Um, it's the Desert Bloom set and I don't buy much scrapbooking card, I bought this a long time ago, um, it's the only set I've actually got um, a proper set of, it's 8 by 8 inches which is just smaller than the height of the Midori, I don't know if you can see there. Um, basically I have made some Filofax dividers out of this stuff um, so I don't have all of the um, pages but it is um, half of them are one-sided and glittery and then the other half of them are double-sided and not glittery and I'm going to be picking some card from the double-sided and not glittery pad because I want to make a secretarial type pocket like um, this so it's got the front part of the pocket and then the back part of the pocket and the back part of the pocket is going to stick onto the leather and the front part of the pocket is going to be shown 
so um, if you can imagine that on the back cover of my Midori here it's going the back part is the back side of the back part is going to stick to the leather so I need that to be flat so it mustn't be glittery but also if I don't have any papers in it the fr the front side of the back part will be showing so it would be nice if it was double sided whereas the front part of the front is also going to be showing so it would be nice if that was the pattern side but basically when you fold it over because it will be um, attached there that's the front part the front side of the front part it will go around so that this is the back side of the back part stuck on there you don't want this side to be glittery because the um, it wouldn't stick to the leather properly so I'm going to be using a double sided piece so that you, when you see the inside it's colourful and when you see the front it's patterned and the um, it's not going to be glittery so I hope that made sense so um, I'm going to show you a fast version of me making it and I hope this experiment works because otherwise I may ruin my Fodori but um, yes I'm going to start making it now this isn't a tutorial I don't want you to um, start doing it and blame me but if it works I'll do a tutorial in another video okay thanks for watching I'll see you these are my essential tools for the project and in the end I actually forgot to eat the chocolate whoops um, I'll eat it later um, so I've already chosen this card it's pink with um, flowers and leaves and things so I think it goes very well with the purple and I've got to be aware that the elastic is going to cause a bump so I've got to work around that So I'm just making sure that it will fit and actually that's the corner I'm going to do and actually if I fold it in half it will be kind of perfect. So I'm just working out which way to fold it, whether I want the the um, side that is attached to be on the side or on the bottom and I decided to have it on the side. So I'm folding it in half. As I said this isn't a tutorial so I'm not going to go through every step, I'm just going to sort of um, guide you through my thought process and then when I do my tutorial video I'll do step by step and I'm just um, going to do a dot where the elastic sits so that um, I can do the pocket slightly underneath so that I know where to avoid so I've just done a dot there so I know where to avoid and I just realised I didn't have my ruler so I had to go and get it. So this is my metal ruler which I use when using my craft knife because I've used plastic rulers in the past and I've managed to cut chunks out of the ruler because um, obviously it slices plastic. So I just realised I need to do a flap at the bottom to be able to glue the two sides together. You can sort of see my hair dangling. <laughs> so the pencil didn't make much of a mark the first time. So I'm drawing the line again and I'll do the corners. And my pencil lead broke. This is all very much of a kind of working it out as I'm going along. I've got my craft knife. So very carefully cutting it. Obviously I don't want to hurt myself. I don't think I've ever hurt myself with a craft knife before. I have hurt myself with the um, the pointy tool I used to use instead of a leather awl. I was um, doing some um, stitching inserts together and it kind of went through a bit quick and went into my finger. That wasn't fun. Uh, so I've um, confirmed by holding it up against the leather that half the 8 inch piece of card would fit perfectly so I'm cutting away the section that I don't need on the other side it does take a few passes to get through the leather uh, I mean the um, the card 
I do have a heavier duty craft knife which is much tougher and I'm able to put more pressure on which means that it's easier to cut away but um, I can't find it so I'm just using this one. It should be okay for most projects this one but I did ruin one of my blades um, when I was doing a, a quite a big project at Christmas trying to make my brother's um, advent calendar so what then I did buy a heavy duty craft knife which I use for most um, tough projects. So there's my dot and now I've got my flap and I'm going to cut along a line there and I'm just going to um, make sure that I've got the card the right way round and I know where the elastic is. So I'm going to draw a line. I'm not really measuring because I know where the dot is and I know kind of what angle I want it at. And I'm folding the card backwards so that when I cut along that one line it cuts both sides of the card. And I'm just getting a clip so that I can clip both sides of the card together so one side doesn't move while the other one stays still and I don't end up with a wonky cut. And first I was going to do it with scissors, and then I changed my mind and decided to do it with a craft knife before I started cutting. So I'm just um, realising that I need to create a flap here, but in the end I actually work out that I didn't need the flap there. So you'll see later that I cut that off, but um, that won't be for a minute or so, or maybe a couple of minutes. I'm not quite sure how long this um, video is at the moment. So I'm just cutting that flap. When I do the tutorial, I will um, tell you all the stages because you probably won't want this flap either, and I'll explain why later. So now the pocket is going to be a bit sh smaller than it would have been. It would have been um, four inches wide and now it's going to be about um, three and three quarter inches. Um, maybe, no that's about right, three and three quarter inches. So I'm just going to score down this line and that's just a light pass with the knife. Obviously I don't want to go through the knife and I can fold it back and it would still be strong enough that it wouldn't kind of fall off. I'm clipping the card back together so that it doesn't budge. Now I'm just going to cut the horizontal, I mean the um, diagonal line. Being very careful that I don't cut my fingers, keeping them a fair distance away from the edge of the ruler. And then where I have um, got a little bit less of a, the width of the card, I'm just cutting that part of the um, card away on the other side. You don't have to do this, obviously, because I realised later that I did it wrong, so when I do the step by step I will not do that part. So okay I've got the body of my pocket and now I just got to remind myself which way round it's going so that's not the right way, that's the correct way. Obviously you can see the flap at the bottom and I've got my ATG gun which I'm using to glue the flaps down. You don't have to use an ATG gun because that's quite a, a professional tool if you aren't already a scrapbooker or a um, a paper craft that you can use one of the little glue rollers or you can even use PVA or a glue stick or something like that. So I'm just folding the flap down and I'm using my scissors to kind of fold it down a bit more and I've just noticed that it doesn't really align properly at the bottom but that doesn't matter because um, I'm going to cover it with washi tape at the bottom. So I'm just going to use my adhesive along there gluing it down making sure that it's all flat all the way along and there's my pocket and then when I inspect it I realize I don't want that small edge sealed because it means that I get to put less paper in I don't want this um, side here to be um, 
glued down with the flap. I realised I'd made a mistake earlier trying to um, factor in that flap. So I get my craft knife and I very carefully um, separate the two pieces of card because it's, it's glued, it's a bit tricky. And then I'm going to cut that flap off so that it's open like a normal secretarial pocket. It's a little bit messy because um, there's some glue left so um, while off camera I actually unstick the glue um, I just kind of work at it with my finger and it comes off and I'm cutting that line um, that corner off there so it's a bit more like one of the secretarial pockets you get in one of these file folders that you um, see these amazing people on YouTube making and I realize it looks quite good on the actual inside of the leather so I'm happy to glue it down this is the fabric glue I'm using which um, is designed for gluing fabric to fabric but it also says on the bottle that it glues other things I'm going to be using quite a lot of it because obviously I want to have good coverage so that it sticks but also I'm hoping that the glue will kind of stiffen the leather a bit more so I've got this child's um, spatula thing this is what I use to um, stick, um, well, to apply PVA to stick things down. PVA, I think in America you call it um, white glue or Elmer's glue. Um, and I am using quite a lot. So I'm covering the whole of the back. And I'm being very liberal and making sure I cover the whole side. So I'm making sure that it doesn't dry too much before I'm able to apply it. I'm holding the elastic out of the way and pressing it down into the corner so that it's equidistant from the edges and I'm really 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 pressing it so that it sticks and I'm holding it down making sure that the, um, the glue sticks to the fibres of the leather. So there you go, there's my pocket. So here's the finished thing, um, it's been glued to the leather for about 20 minutes now so hopefully it's adhering nicely. I'm going to give it about 24 hours to dry properly before I put anything in the pocket. Um, hopefully it will stick well to the fibres of the leather because this is a very kind of loose fibred um, inner side of the leather so um, I'm concerned that it may not stick as well as for example the Midori leather which is much flatter feeling of the um, the suede side so I'm going to be keeping an eye on that trying to um, make sure it will glue properly um, I will give you a progress report and then I will upload the um, make and upload a tutorial if I'm happy with the technique and the finished result but it has meant that it isn't as floppy at the back which is good um, I'm not going to bend it all the way back but it is much stiffer than it was. I'm actually thinking about doing a pocket up here kind of like the pocket there um, with acetate on the front so that I can put my in case of emergency card in there and I'm also thinking about possibly doing a pocket here because I like the um, the pocket I have in the front of my Midori because I'm able to put my bus ticket in it. So there you go. Um, thank you for watching and I will hopefully see you in the tutorial video when I make one if this is a successful project. Bye!